Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here this morning. For me, it's uh, very exciting, and I think it's a great day for vocational and technical education. Uh, as we try and move our economy forward, we need to start rethinking how we educate our workforce. And firsthand, I know that there, there's other ways and the technical fields are very important. So we have to get away from that narrative of the single path to success because there is other uh, uh, sources as vocational and technical education which you can make a great job. And I know with these package of bills, there's eight bills we're putting uh, forward today, that it has New Jersey being part of giving that American dream. And that American dream says to somebody like a little boy from a communist Cuba that can come to this state of New Jersey and with hard work and determination can become Speaker of the House. So the sky's the limit. So this is something that I think is very important to me. I actually went to school. I became a plumber. Then with county colleges, I got certifications and uh, fire technologies and building technology. I was able to open up a business and then became a code enforcement official. And I charted my own path. And we want to tell these students that they can chart their own path if they want to be a lawyer, like the chairman of education, or a plumber, or even the speaker of the General Assembly, they can choose what they can be, and it's, it'll be available to them. I'm going to give you a little bit of excerpt of what some of these bills do. Uh, require New Jersey report cards to include indicators of student career readiness. In other words, require preparation programs for teachers and school counselors to include coursework to support improved student career readiness, authorizes the Economic Development Authority to issue an additional $50 million in bonds to provide grants for county vocational district facility projects, establishes four-year county vocational school district facilities partnership grant programs, require all school district and public college to enter into dual enrollment agreements to provide college level instruction to high school students throughout the course offer of college or high school campus, provides that if a career and technical education program of a county vocational school district is taught in an industry setting, the off-site location will be exempt for certain state regulations. And I think that's kind of an important one because uh, today there, it's not feasible to have some of this technology in the school. So I think partnering up and being able to waive some of these rules, I think it's very important. Uh, provides additional state aid to vocational uh, school districts which enrollments which increase by more than 10% and provides state aid to adult education programs, which I think that that is very important. The educa adult education is something that my former uh, um, uh, running mate was very proud of, and I think it's so important. I think that's a tool that my mom used to be able to learn somewhat limited English when we got here. So I think that adult education is something we should be doing, and, and I think we need to let our students know that uh, um, there's a path other than college, that there's some good paying jobs that you can make a great living and you should be able uh, to, uh, you know, do certain things that you're good at and you can feel proud of them. Our economy depends on these jobs and I think it's so important that our workforce, we train them so these employers, when they come seeking these employees, they're trained in the right field and in the right profession. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, the great chairman of education, Pat Dighton. Pat, you can say a few words. Uh, I, I just could not uh, compliment the speaker enough. This is, this is really, really valuable stuff. Uh, you know, the United States of America is the greatest democracy in the history of man, not necessarily only because of freedom, but because it has always been the land of opportunity. When we see our center cities today where there is upwards of 50% unemployment amongst young folk, you say, how are we, we going to change that? 
And college is not for everybody. You know, one thing that I would love to do, I don't know if we can do it by legislation or just encourage the vocational schools to do it. I think we should change the name of our vocational schools to career academies because that's really what they have become. They have become opportunities for kids to find careers on which they will succeed, prosper, and make a solid and, and uh, successful family for themselves and most importantly for our country and all of us. So this, this is really, really good stuff. I just could not compliment the speaker enough. What we have got to do and what this bill starts to do is to partner business with the schools so that they know the opportunities that are available, properly train the kids, and therefore jobs will be waiting for them. Coincidentally, yesterday I was at a First Communion reception and I happened to sit down next to a guy who's a headhunter. And he told me that he works, it's his job is really basically to find <coughs> positions for people in the computer uh, industry. And he right now is seeking out to China and India to fill 1,000 positions to get temporary status, resident status, for 1,000 folks from China and India to come and fill positions in the United States of America. That is just, that is just really unacceptable. So again, that's what our vocational schools, what I would love to call them career academies, should do. And again, thank you, Speaker. And I really want to thank uh, uh, business and industry. It started with Phil Kirshner. Mel Melanie is carrying it on. We really now have the linkage where industry is involved in, in making this a successful program. And it's my honor to introduce the president of New Jersey Business and Industry, Melanie Willoughby. I almost pulled a John Travolta there. <laughs> uh, hello, Mr. Chairman. How are you? <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we would not be here if it were not for your leadership, because during uh, your swearing in, uh, you made it as part of your agenda uh, to bring to fruition the growth uh, of career and technical education in New Jersey. And for that, we are very, very thankful because of the fact that we recognize that it's extremely important for our state and for our 21,000 business members uh, about the fact that there is a skills gap. And that skills gap occurs because of the fact that so many young people are not leaving uh, their high schools and their colleges with the kind of skills that they need and to be ready to work. But we have gems in New Jersey. We have 21. Uh, county vocational education and career academies that are actually doing this job of training our young people in high school and preparing them for the world of work right there in high school with potential dual education uh, with, with uh, colleges and being able to move on. And so when we came to the speaker and said that we would very <coughs> much like him to be a partner with us in the coalition that was formed um, with the uh, county votech um, council and also with the speaker and the Senate president and he came right to the table and we really want to thank him and the chairman and we look forward to moving this package through because of the fact that it's very important for expanding capacity of uh, vocational education in New Jersey for helping to form additional partnerships between business and um, ed education in order to make this happen because the businesses recognize we're willing to step up to the table to provide the work-based learning that we know is so important for our young people to be able to get that start in business. And so we have over 150 members of, of our coalition so far and it's growing every single solitary day. And so we want to have our young people have that opportunity to translate the work that they uh, have in their vote tech high schools into great careers. And that is possible every day. And with this legislation, it's going to be even more possible. So thank you again, Mr. Speaker and Mr. Chairman, for making this possible. And now I'd like to introduce one of our partners, Judy Savage, who's the executive director of the New Jersey Council of County Vocational and Technical Schools. And um, she is just doing a great job in working with all of the <coughs> superintendents of the vocational uh, and technical schools to make this possible. Thank you very much, Melanie. And thank you, Speaker Prieto, Chairman Dignan, um, for your leadership in recognizing career and technical education as both an economic and an educational priority for New Jersey. The bill package that you're introducing today will strengthen the workforce pipeline that employers require while expanding opportunities for young people to succeed in a highly competitive economy. Today's career and technical education programs prepare students for college and for careers. In addition to a full academic program, county vocational technical schools offer industry credentials, 
work-based learning, college credits, and a career focus that gives students a head start on their future success. The programs are in very high demand throughout the state because students thrive when they have a chance to apply academic learning to their own career goals and interests. When you enable people to build, to repair, to create, and to collaborate in a career-focused environment, that is real-world preparation for the world of work. So exposing high school students to employers, to internships, on-the-job experiences opens the door to a wide range of career options, including many that could be launched with an industry credential or a two-year degree. And thanks to the strong partnerships that our schools have with two- and four-year colleges and universities throughout the state, many of our students have the chance to earn college credits for their advanced technical learning. It puts them on the pathway to advanced degrees in technical fields like STEM and healthcare while reducing college costs at the same time. So many of the bills the speaker and the chairman are announcing today will help to expand the current capacity of New Jersey's county vocational technical schools. On a statewide average, our schools received about two and a half applications for every available space last year. There were more than 16,000 students who were interested in going to a county vocational school who couldn't be accommodated. So we truly applaud the speaker and the chairman for proposing a variety of mechanisms that will help address this need. This legislation will increase New Jersey's focus on preparing students for careers as well as for college. And the bills will open the doors of opportunity to more young people who want to be prepared for the jobs of tomorrow. They'll keep the economy growing by expanding the pool of well-prepared future workforces that workers that our employers so desperately need. So thank you, Speaker and Chairman Dignan, for your leadership and your really deep commitment to career and technical education. We look forward to working with you, to all the employers involved in the Employer Coalition, and I want to um, single out um, Graham Pfeffer from NJEA and Jim Malman from uh, Netcetera, both member, founding members of the coalition who are here today. Um, and of course, Melody, our partner at NJBIA for all of your um, support and hard work. Thank you. With that, I think this is um, a great package of legislation that will be moving forward. And I will take any questions if um, any are seen. Um, one of the bills authorizes $50 million in borrowing. Uh, you said there should be more state aid for adult education. Correct. We're looking at cutting state aid in another right. committee right now. Uh, is there a price tag on this package? There, uh, the price tag is some of those bills that you just talked about, the ones that have, that would be the additional bonding that we have to look at and, you know, and there, budgeting is about priorities. What makes uh, sense? Uh, the adult education was uh, 10 million at one point that was cut away to about 6 million and I think it's non-existent now. I think it's something that we invest a lot in education. We, uh, we invest about 12.9 billion dollars. So I think the amount of money that we're talking about is minuscule when you look at the whole big picture. So we need to figure out how we fund this. Uh, I'm not a big fan of borrowing but there's certain things that need to be done and that's why I've been advocating about the state uh, getting additional revenues to be able to do all these good things that we should be doing. How would you characterize this package? What is Overall, what, what is it trying to do? What this package does is put into a focus vocational and technical education and facilitate uh, the implementation of uh, um, things that are no longer done in this state. There's a lot of things that we need to start looking at, whether it's manufacturing. Manufacturing is not manufacturing that it was when we were kids. It's very different. We need to educate these uh, students for the jobs that are out there and partnering with the employers and the businesses and the business and industry, they can tell us what employees they're looking for because there's jobs that they could be filled and you could make a good living at them. You said there are things that are no longer done in the state. Why do you suppose these jobs initially left New Jersey, however long ago it was, that they did? Why do you think we no longer do that? Well, a lot, a lot of things 
you know, change. And obviously a lot of things have gone overseas. A lot of things are, are starting to come back. So there's a lot of difference. We have, in, in New Jersey, we have made New Jersey a lot more business friendly and we want to bring those employers here. Now we have to give them the workforce. So I think that's why it's important. It's, a new, it's the 21st century. It's a lot of difference. When you talk about an automotive shop, when, when I was a kid, those schools cannot have those facilities because the technology just runs away from you. The cost would be monumental. So that's why we're partnering with some of these facilities will be beneficial. And that's what some of this legislation does. Pat Dugan? Yeah. Uh, you said uh, county and vocational, county vocational technical schools should really be renamed career academies. Why not put a bill in? I, I think I will, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, honestly, I've, I've been checking on it because I, it's county by county. So, and some have already changed their names. So, I think the better way always to do it is to encourage and see if it can be done voluntarily. But if worse comes to worse, we can mandate it. And obviously, you know, there's always a cost associated with everything changing the name, changing the names on the buildings, etc. But that's actually. Uh, Judy, that's actually happening in several counties. Many, right? many counties have already update, updated their names. We have institutes of technology, schools of technology. Yeah. Um, right. We have a polytech, yeah. um, technical schools. So, um, and then within the districts themselves, many of the schools have become have our career career academies, and they and they use that name. Somebody said there are twenty one of them. Are there? One per county? No, 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 there's several. In, there's, how many in total? There are, there are 21 county vocational technical school districts. Okay. Within each county vocational technical school district, there are um, multiple schools. Some counties have one large school that serves the entire county, and some counties have many. Uh, Monmouth County, for example, has 14. Tim, is that right? There's 14 buildings. We have eight, eight actual schools with, with state code numbers. And we have four in Middlesex, so it, it depends on the county. Okay. And how would you characterize what, you, what this package does? I, uh, honestly, Michael, I think it's, it's one of the most exciting things since I've been down here because I just, vocational schools have always had kind of a, a uh, image of being uh, trade schools, and that is not the case right. now. You know, with the booming health industry. I was talking to somebody recently about Newark Airport. That there, you know, that is now booming and expanding, and there's an opportunity for new jobs. What is it called? Me Me what Megatronics. Megatronics, which is an area that is now being utilized, where we have a combination of some computer skills and some mechanical skills, mm -hmm. where kids don't need a college degree, but there are incredible opportunities. I, I think this is one of the most, and I really want to congratulate the speaker. One of the most exciting things since since my time down here in Trenton, because it's about helping, it's about helping giving people opportunity and right. folks. Folks just are lost. You know, they either go to college or they don't go to college. Right. And to have a place, one stop shopping to go for career opportunities. I mean, not long ago, Judy knows that the public schools didn't even share their lists at seventh and eighth grade with the vocational schools right. to show the opportunities. If the kids had an interest in going to the vocational schools, they had to go on the weekend or after hours to meet with the counselors. That has all now changed, and to a large extent because of Judy's impetus. So we have to encourage this and, and, and cultivate. Well, you told me that. And you say you started as a plumber, and uh, did you learn another trade or after that? What I did was I went to the county colleges and I got certifications in building technologies and fire technologies, which I was able to be licensed as a code official. And that's what I was talking about, charting my own path and being able in those technical fields, using that as my vehicle uh, to make a living. Yeah. Obviously, uh, the things being addressed, the revenue situation. Um, you know, what are you expecting here on Wednesday? About uh, 50 million in bonds? No, I'm only kidding. Um, listen, uh, the governor outlined um, some areas where there's money left, and obviously it's his decision uh, to present what he's going to do, and we're awaiting and see what the final numbers are. So we have another budget, uh, fiscal year 15, to get going. But right now, we're just waiting. So I don't like to uh, work in hypothetical. So I will, once I see it, I deal but in realistics. Is there anything, if it does come, for instance, pensions? You know, is there anything that you consider going too far that you won't go? 
It, it all depends if it needs legislation or not. I have no idea what that's going to be. He may come what he may come with may not uh, have uh, legislative requirements. So it may just be what he's going to do, and then we'll we'll see if it's something that we're open to it. Yeah, sorry, speak. I just want to follow up on that a little bit. Um, you put the gas tax on the table before uh, increasing the gas tax a bit. Uh, you know, Senate President Sweeney uh, brought up the millionaires tax uh, last week. Uh, do you think both of those things are going to need to be on the table to deal with this situation? I think everything is on the table, and obviously we want to see what we do for the state of New Jersey. I think we have a revenue problem, so we need to grow our revenues, you know, a revenue stream that is constant. And, you know, the transportation uh, infrastructure is very important, and we need to start taking care of that. So that needs to be a dedicated fund, because right now, we're at capacity, bonding capacity, and most of the money we raise is going down to pay down debt. So we need to look at all options. So I think everything's on the table, and this will be a discussion to have with the governor. So how would that work? Do you, do you have a bill, and would it require order approval? Uh, uh, right now, what I have done is spark a dialogue that nobody had wanted to talk about. And I sparked the dialogue. It's not about throwing a bill and my idea is the best idea. It's about having a conversation, an honest conversation. How do we move forward? How do we pay for our transportation infrastructure? How do we pay for our additional obligations? So uh, that needs to be a work in process and everybody has to be part of it. The Senate President uh, seemed to jump on board the millionaire's tax late last week. What's your view on that? I, I think it's something that should be on the table and I've advocated for it. Our House has passed it on numerous occasions and I think it's the right thing to do. It's that one percent that I think would end up giving back and it would be very helpful in these trying times. Any progress on arbitration negotiations with the Governor? Are you still talking? We're still talking. We're still working on it. Yeah. Okay. Good enough? All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.